This past Tuesday, I was right down the road at Pleasantville United Methodist Church, sitting in a room with Methodist clergy from Connecticut and around New York. And all of a sudden, as we got into the mystery of the gospel, the room was filled with a palpable fear. Yeah, this gospel scares religious folk, professional religious folk. It wasn't personal fear. It was institutional fear. Because we realize that we have moved from the revolutionary gospel of Mark into the absolutely radical gospel of St. John. And what's so radical about this? This is just Jesus cleansing the temple, right? Uh, it's typical Lenten fair. Well, it has to do with what Jesus says about the temple itself and about the real temple. What sign do you have for doing this? Tear this temple down and in three days I'll raise it up. Now that temple, you talk about a building program, they were still doing the overhaul that Herod the Great had to sign before Jesus was born. So the, naturally they say, what, tear this down, we've been working on it 46 years and you'll build it in three days? He wasn't talking about a physical place, was he? The true locus of worship is which temple? the temple of the body. Well, of course, it's Jesus' body, right? That's what the institutional church will tell you. It's Jesus' body, and if we're going to worship Jesus' body, then you have to do what? you got to come here. Except John doesn't say that. John goes on in his gospel to say, have Jesus say, I and the Father are one, as you and I are what? One. Paul backs that up over and over again. Paul talks about being in Christo, in Christ. You know, words like that after you're brought up in the Christian faith kind of just bzz, go right over your head. You hear them all the time. In Christ. Our Christ. Christ, 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 Christ. Now, what caused that pall of fear to settle on that room was, well, if everybody realizes they're the locus of true worship, what's going to make them want to come to church? <laughs> I mean, you're carrying your own temple around. Why do you need to come to this one? Oh, my gosh, you might not need, need me anymore. And then what will we do? You might find God out there on the, you know, the ninth green or going down the slope, or whatever. So the institutional church, i got to think about that. We have two ways to respond to this. You evil sinners. Sinner, 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 sinner. Yeah, you too, and you. You're all sinners, and by golly, you better be here every Sunday so I can stand up here and go, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and you too. <laughs> Wave my hand over you and say, okay, you're taken care of. Oh, by the way, hang around and come up here and we'll have a little dose of grace for you and that'll get you through the week. But you better be where next week? Right here. And by the way, when the plate comes around, be sure to toss a few dollars in it too. Now that's one way. We, we come at you with fear. So we sublimate the institutional fear of, oh my God, everybody will go away with giving it to you. Isn't that a wonderful gift? So, but you're in Christo. But you're Christ. You're redeemed. You're the child and heir of God. Now there was another one. Let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah. The other thing that the church likes to do, and it's a lot easier since we're all broken up now into all these different denominations, we play the I believe right game. And one of the ways that we used to really do that was with communion. You know that bread I put in your hand or on your tongue? 
how's Jesus really get in there? Is Jesus really in there? Well, it happens with transubstantiation. No, it happens with consubstantiation. No, it happens when the community is together and it's a memorial. Well, it's not really in there. It's a symbol and thousands of trees gave their lives so we could write those specious arguments down. And then miracles happen. Sometimes the institutional church itself can get overwhelmed by the radical message that's in this book. And that happened in the 60s. You remember a thing called Vatican II? Church is really trying to do this now with Vatican II, backing up. At Vatican II, in the document on liturgy, they talked about real presence. That's what that big argument was about. Who believes right? Who believes wrong? Who's got it right? And they said, that's a moot question. The fundamental sacrament is the church itself. Real presence happens when all of us, and you too, when all of us come together in one place. Because in Christo, in Christo, in Christo, in Christo, in Christo, Christ is here in a palpable way. Not fear, not palpable fear, but the palpable power of possibility in Christ. And I see that happen here. I've seen that happen here. It's going to happen tomorrow night. This community has put a lot of support behind the empty bowl. We're going to make sure, a lot of us are, that people, our neighbors, don't go to bed hungry. We support the food pantry. You ever heard of Maria Braz? That ought to rattle a little bit around because we pray that every Sunday in the prayers of the people. I hope we do. I hope it hadn't got dropped out. Who's doing the prayers this morning? Whoever's doing the prayers, if Maria Braz isn't in there, be sure to write her in. And it'll be followed by the Casa de Santa Ana. Now, one of the people here in the office said, why are we giving money to the Yale Chorus? That, you know, should we be supporting the Yale Chorus? Well, it's through the Yale Chorus that we support Maria Braz at Casa de Santa Ana in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, where she works in one of the most violent slums in South America. And what she does, she takes into the heart of darkness the light of Christ through knowledge and music. She began a chorus for the children there. For the first time, they tasted hope. They tasted something beyond the cycle of violence they saw on the street. You know, how in the world does somebody survive in a situation like that? She dyed her hair bright red. Now here's a testimony to this woman. Anytime she's driving through that slum and there's a gun battle between competing drug warlords, they all stop. Whoa, there's Maria. We cannot harm this woman. She's too valuable of a resource. We support her because we come together here in Christo. And as the body of Christ, we make Christ possible in dark places of the world. Like we did in Mongolia, like down in Haiti, and in other places. So you evil sinners, now you won't get that from me. And you won't get sermons on this is the right way that sacrament happens. Uh, we don't do the hocus pocus thing either. Instead, I trust Christ. And one of the things I said to my fellow clergy on Tuesday was Christ is not a loner. Christ seeks out Christ, comes together in community so that love can be magnified comes together in community and calls us 
to even greater possibilities.